Hi folks. Well, it's an unusual one today. Uh, the sky is forecast to be clear until the early evening when it's uh, supposedly going to cloud over. So what I, 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 I'm going to plan to do is <laughs> try something different. My aim is to image the Apollo 15 landing site during the day. Uh, and in order to do that, I'm going to be using an IR pass filter. It lets in infrared light at a very specific wavelength of 742 nanometers, I believe. The point is that it will make the sky appear dark, and wavelengths uh, of that light are less prone to atmospheric uh, turbulence. We should, in theory, be able to image the moon in detail during the day using that filter with a monochrome camera. That's the theory anyway, folks, so let's see uh, how, <laughs> how it works in practice. I'm Dr. Ray, and welcome to Astrogadge. Well, here we are in Virtual Moon Atlas. Um, the Apollo 15 landing site, as I said, is in the Apennine mountain range. Uh, this is roughly what the, the phase of the moon is uh, today. And the Apennine mountain range extends from the upper central northern part of the moon. You can see here it extends down in a slight curve. The Apollo 15 mission was launched on the 26th of July, uh, 1971. It was at that time the most uh, difficult and dangerous of the landings so far attempted. It was to become the fourth successful uh, lunar landing in the Apollo program. And it was also notable for the fact it took uh, an electric vehicle uh, along called the, the Lunar Rover, which uh, allowed a much wider field of exploration around the lunar module. Its landing site was here. Uh, and you can just about make out this photograph. Uh, there's a little crater here called Hadley Sea, and extending north to north to south, uh, encompassing that crater is a rill called Hadley Rill. The mission commander was David Scott, the lunar module pilot James Irwin, and the command module pilot was Al Warden. As I said before, it's quite a difficult site on the moon to image or even observe. You have to have the uh, illumination angle just right. To find the site, uh, locate this large crater uh, to this, uh, vaguely to the, the northwest, called Archimedes, largest crater in the area, it's terraced. And take a roughly half past three bearing from it, and you'll come to this area here where you, you can uh, locate the rill and the crater Hadley C. Just to show the, the landing site in a little bit more detail, uh, the following are two clips. Um, first one's taken from the command module as it orbited above uh, where the uh, lunar lander uh, came down. And the second clip is actually uh, a film taken uh, from the lunar module as it lands. You can actually see the rill just out the right hand window as they're descending. <laughs> Absolutely amazing footage. So here we can see <laughs> the filter seems to be working. We're getting some incredible detail here <laughs> in daylight. And you may be wondering what, why, why I'm doing this, what the hurry is. Well, uh, tonight uh, the illumination for this particular um, area on the moon is, is most favourable. So uh, even uh, in the event that I get a clear sky tomorrow, uh, it's not going to be as well illuminated. So. Fingers crossed. So, okay, folks, uh, I thought I'd push it a little bit and see how far we could go with this given the conditions. So, what I've done is I've put a two times power mate uh, on the telescope, so really push the, uh, push the focal ratio. 
are getting some really, really nice data. Wow. So we're actually imaging at F30. <laughs> I think I can see the landing sites a little bit shimmer, but yeah, a bit shimmer. Well, folks, dare I say it, everything seems to have gone uh, pretty well. Uh, the filter seems to have done its job remarkably. Um, I, I think I've got some quite nice data. So what we'll do now is we'll have, a, a, as usual, a quick romp through uh, what I did to process it. I'm actually really, really re pleased with the results of it. I uh, mean, you bear in mind that Hadley Rill is only like uh, one and a half kilometres across. It really does show you the resolving power uh, and the detail that this telescope uh, can, can, can bring out, even in daylight when you're using the infrared uh, pass filter. Uh, really, really pretty impressed by it. Um, well, I think so anyway, you may have different views, but. Uh, I'm just going to leave now uh, with the uh, finished uh, article and uh, just want to say thank you again for watching. Um, if you like the content please give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. In the meantime, thanks again. I hope you enjoy the photograph and keep watching the skies. <laughs>
Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the skies.